The title of this video is Cellular Respiration and Photosynthesis. Now these terms should sound familiar because they're both part of the carbon cycle. So here's an example of the carbon cycle. You can see here that we've got both photosynthesis and respiration from animals and respiration from plants. Notice photosynthesis is taking the carbon out of the atmosphere and putting it into the plants, whereas respiration from plants and animals puts carbon into the air. So first we're going to talk about cellular respiration, what it is and what equation represents it. To do that we're going to think about a runner. So before someone goes off for a run, they want to make sure they have enough energy for that run. And as humans, how do we make sure we have enough energy? By eating our food. So she's going to have her cliff bar. But how exactly does that cliff bar give her energy? That's the question cellular respiration will answer. So inside your cells, here's a cell, there's a structure called a mitochondria. So the mitochondria is right here, and you can see it's zoomed in. It's really tiny normally. And that mitochondria is responsible for making that energy that the runner needs. There's a special equation, though, for making that energy. We can't just make it from food alone. The runner will also need oxygen to make that energy. And then from the food, she's going to use what's called glucose. Glucose is a special kind of sugar found in most foods. Its chemical formula is C6H12O6. Get that right. O6. And when that runner combines the oxygen she's breathing in plus the glucose in her food, she's able to make that energy she needs for her run. And that energy we call ATP. That is the energy that your cells need to do everything they do. But as a byproduct, that runner is also going to release carbon dioxide into the air as well as some water. So again, the runner is bringing in oxygen, bringing in glucose, her food, releasing CO2 by breathing that out, and releasing water, which is usually through sweat. That is our equation for cellular respiration. Oxygen plus glucose is ATP, carbon dioxide, and water. Remember, the whole purpose being to make this ATP. So I'll just take a second to re-emphasize how important this ATP is. ATP is what allows us to live. It's all of our body processes, not just making our muscles work, but everything that happens in our body needs energy. So you can think about ATP as like the batteries we need to keep going. And we are not the only organisms that use ATP as our batteries or our energy to keep going. Plants need ATP. Uh, mushrooms need ATP. Other animals like insects and fish need ATP. And even bacteria use ATP. So ATP is super important for most living things on the planet. And the way we get that ATP is through cellular respiration. Again, remember though, in order to make ATP, we need a source of glucose to make that energy. Lucky for you, you can eat pizza and burgers and other sugary things like macaroons from Paris Baguette to actually make your ATP. Plants, on the other hand, can't just cook up a meal and eat food in order to make their ATP. So they are a special case of how we need to make food for plants. Plants make their food through the process called photosynthesis. So we're going to take a look at this apple tree here in a minute and talk about how it makes its food. But the cartoon kind of makes the point as well. Instead of plants eating food like we would at a meal, they have to make their own food, which then gets converted into ATP. All right, so let's talk through the steps of photosynthesis. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on the leaf. So one leaf from this apple tree if you zoom in on that, you're going to see many blocky structures we call cells. And in those cells, we have many other smaller structures that are called chloroplasts. Now, just like the mitochondria is the structure in the cell that made the ATP, 
The chloroplast is the structure in the cell where photosynthesis is happening. Now, we gotta think about what do plants need to grow and to survive? So if you're a plant, you need some sunlight, you need some water, and you need some carbon dioxide from the air. And with all of those things then, you can make your glucose, which then you use to make energy later on. And that's essentially all there is to photosynthesis. So let's write this into an equation. We're gonna take some water. Remember down here, the plants are using water. Take some carbon dioxide from the air. The sun is gonna help us put those water molecules and carbon dioxide molecules together to make them react. And it's going to make glucose, C6, H12, O6, that's our glucose, as food for the plant. The plant also gives off waste products in this process, the main one being oxygen gas. So we're gonna add that to the end of our equation as oxygen gas. Here's another look at that process. Remember again what comes in, carbon dioxide plus water with the help of the sun makes sugar, C6H12O6, also known as glucose, and oxygen. So there's photosynthesis in a diagram as well. Okay, after discussing photosynthesis and cellular respiration, you should see now that there are two types of organisms on the planet depending on how they get their food. So the first ones are the autotroph. Auto meaning self. So these are the uh, organisms like plants that produce food and that food, remember, being glucose. Okay, for themselves. And again, an example of this is anything that goes through photosynthesis. So organisms with photosynthesis. I'll abbreviate there. The other type of organism what now we've discussed is a heterotroph. The prefix hetero means other. And so instead of making food on their own by themselves, they are going to consume food, which is, again, remember, glucose, by eating other organisms. Examples of these, of course, are humans, bacteria, mushrooms, and other animals. Okay, so now hopefully you have a better feeling for what photosynthesis and respiration are, but let's one more time review how they're related to the carbon cycle. Remember, the whole purpose of respiration is to make ATP, the energy. In order to do that, it has to use glucose and as a byproduct, get rid of CO2. The whole purpose of photosynthesis is to make glucose. Right, then the glucose can be used to eventually make the energy or the ATP. When it makes glucose, it needs to get the CO2 out of the air and into the plant and use that as a reactant in order to build that glucose molecule.